of slots, of orbital slot for satellites, for two satellites. As we are here today, we can actually launch our two satellites. We have two orbital slots allocated to South Sudan. So that should not be a surprise to you. Other countries celebrate this significant. There are states, member states, that waited for more than 20 years to get a slot. This is an achievement to attest to what Dr. Robert, uh, Roberto said yesterday. As we are here to supplement that, our sector now is encouraging uh, youth in ICT, and especially girls, and we sponsored seven ladies recently to ITU to attend engineering mentoring conference. We are not just making policy statements, we are also taking actions. That is just to underline what Dr. Roberto said. To come to the topic of human capitals, and I will only pick, because I did not read the entire paper, but I will pick from the presentation made by Dr. Ali, which is quite very comprehensive. I will underline the reference he made to Rwanda in order to deliver my message. One child, one laptop. But what I would like to remind Dr. Alich is that Rwanda did not just do that leap rocking. Rwanda invests in the core platform of technology, which is infrastructure. Recently, the government of Kenya, in the recent concluded elections, technology was one of election pledge, and President Ruto announced that his government, when elected, will build 100,000 kilometer of fiber optic to every home and every school and every state, which are known in Kenya as counties. That should tell us the foundations of technology. So when President Ruto goes on screen and said we are making money from Facebook and social media, he's not making out of empty because he has put the prerequisite in place. The table where shows the investment that our country makes in each sector. And I don't see that we have been shown any investment made in communication infrastructure. Our own television, SSBC, cannot be seen in Konya Konya. The same with our radio. If you don't have a satellite, and the cost of satellite, you all know, is not available to common South Sudanese. If we have a dream that we are going to go for election, I am waiting to see how you are going to reach your constituencies. <clears throat> the National Communication Authority, which I hate and which implement the policy of the Minister of ICT, had identified the need to diversify our economy right from the beginning. And as a supplement to implement the government policy of e-services, we immediately took the necessary step to lay the ground floor for e-government. We have used this term randomly for the last four days, but I would like to unpack it for you. What is e-government? E-government is when government uses electronics to deliver services to its citizens. But you must first have electronics. You don't have electronics, but you are preaching e-government. How is that possible? <laughs> so the ministry has put in place correct policy to advocate the use of e-government. And to supplement that, we have put in place what is called national domain service. A national domain service is where the ministry created an email system and a website system for our country. These tools were not in place. We may have got political independence, but we don't have digital independence. That is why most of you in this room are using either Gmail or Yahoo. That is, you are covering yourself with a bed sheet borrowed from a neighbor. That's what it is. It's not yours. So whatever you send through those things cannot work. So we have put in place a platform for e-government. 
And this platform is a domain, a name given to us during independence known as .ss. It's known as a top level domain because internet worldwide are given according to member state with their identity. We have been given an internet address for our country, but we never used it. We continue to use the borrowed one. So that is why our security was compromised constantly. That is why e-government could not take off. So the ministry has made it a mandate that we allocate every government institution a web address free of charge. This offer has not been taken up. I think only a few states have now started and some ministries. And the Minister of Education is one of them, University of Juba and Minister of Health. This is the beginning of e-government so that governors receive their notification by email, not by Gmail. <laughs> so, in our effort to support the economic diversifications and promote and convert technology into, into economic value, is that first we would like to recognize that according to ITU, technology has become one of the economic pillars for economic growth. Those economies here, they will attest to that. You are all sitting here, the first thing most of you has was the emails and WhatsApp. So in recognition of that, we begin to diversify our license by giving mobile money, which not only bring technology, but also diversify economy and bring inclusivity so that women in Raja can receive her money by mobile money. We went a step further to engage with the NRA to help them consolidate the use of technology and facilitate them how to collect non-tax revenue from uh, ICT sector, which is really very abstract. So for us, a, to conclude, Dr. Ali, that the basic pillars need to be put in place, which is digital literacy for our primary school today. We are members of East Africa. If you take your seven-year-old child from Nyamlel to Arusha, she will not be able to use the phone. So we need to go for digital literacy as a foundation. We need to invest in digital infrastructure, the telecommunication infrastructure and broadcasting. Without those are the bedrock of all the e-anything you are preaching. Because without the infrastructure, you don't have access to technology. Anything else you say is a wishful thinking. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I would like to introduce two of our discussants who came after we have started. And the first is uh, Mr. Chang Son Chang, and he is the Minister of Higher Education. And then Mr. Kidienda Chong, who is representing the Minister of Health. Thank you for joining us. And now I give the floor to the Honorable Minister of Higher Education. You have the floor. Thank you, Moderator. Thanks, Your Excellency, the first Vice President, and the Chair of this session. Yes, uh, I'm sorry for coming late and also for missing the presentation which I am supposed to respond to. Uh, nonetheless, I'll try to put some points through uh, about the criticality of uh, human capital. First and foremost, human capital is composed of uh, three things. One, child, even before birth. Two, school. Three, health. These three components constitute the human capital, which is developed over time, through your lifetime. When we talk about child, it means that we have to <coughs> We have to take good care of our uh, 
children before even they were born. And when they are born, then we have to make sure that they pass through all the modern uh, way, ways of, uh, of securing their lives. You have to vaccinate them. Uh, you reduce the mortality to a very low level, which is not the case with us and with the third world. Then those who survive, they go, in, they go to school, primary, secondary, until university education, to gain what? To gain that critical knowledge that is used for development. And when they are done, then you want to make sure that the workforce we have must be healthy to produce the goods, the services needed. Otherwise, if we have a low, uh, uh, <coughs> if we don't have that quality, then even our production will be very minimal. So uh, human capital refers to the knowledge, the skills, and health acquired over lifetime and complements physical health, health, 